why did you give that speech? That was on one of the feedback notes that we get back after a speech. And like any mature adult who desires to get critical feedback and grow from it, I responded with the same candor. I said, because I want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, some context may be helpful. This was the speech on the menstrual cycle. <laughs> I probably should have thought that a little bit more before giving the speech, but, oh goodness, I enjoyed it. Some people got uncomfortable, some people thought it was hilarious, and some people were very confused. And for that, I was really excited. But I have come up with a theory about why I give the speeches I give, or why I gave that speech. I have also come up with a theory on why that person asked me that question. Why did you give that speech? And because I'm self-centered, guess what? I'll begin with the theory on myself. <laughs> why did I give that speech? I will use a story to illustrate both scenarios. A man walks down the path, looks over and sees a burning fire pit. Inside, he sees a snake. He wants to save this snake. So he goes in, grabs it, and pulls it out real quick. The snake bites him. He drops it back into the fire. Well, if it's you and me, we'll look at him like, why are you saving a snake? Let it burn, right? He tries again. It bites him again. And as people walk by, they look at him and say, what is wrong with you? That's a snake. It will bite you. I know but I don't want the snake to die. So he goes, finds a long stick, and he tries to pick the snake up, and he gets it out of the fire, throws it into the woods, and he walks away. This person did not change who he was because the snake bites. He found a way to do what he needed to do despite the nature of the snake. Why do I give the speeches I give? I'm very uncomfortable in uncomfortable conversations. But having been in HR for some time, it was required that you handle uncomfortable conversation despite your discomfort. Having to let someone go when you know you're directly affecting their mortgage payment, you're directly affecting the next meal that will be on their table, is not an easy place to be. Then Toastmasters happened, and I figured I will talk about uncomfortable things things that I cringe when I think I need to have a conversation about this. When I gave the conversation about race and police brutality, I could feel my legs shaking the entire speech. I could feel my heartbeat race the entire speech. But I gave it not because I really had to give it. I did want to share the information, but I did have to put myself in that uncomfortable position to share that information. <clears throat> so as opposed to changing who I am and what I'm trying to do, what I should have done with those speeches that were uncomfortable was maybe pay attention to my audience. Do what a good speaker does. Do your homework. Your speech will make some people uncomfortable. Your speech will make people a little uneasy. Your jokes may not land. We saw Sean, and Sean do a Your Mama joke speech one time. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time it was over, you could see from his face he had really crushed that one. But you, when you have speeches like that, prepare your audience. Change your tactic. Do not change who you are. Do not change the speech that you're trying to give but lay a foundation so that people may have an idea of where you're going with your speech. So that the question, why do you give the speeches you give, are not asked. People truly do understand why you're giving the speech you're giving. That was my theory on myself. Now, the person who asked the question, why did you give that speech? In my mature answer, I have thought about it for a long time, and hence that's why it's a speech today. I think I gave that speech last year, or maybe beginning of this year, I don't remember. It's been a long time. 
But that question has recurred in my mind. Every time I get up here to give a speech, every time I try and start creating a speech for me to give, every time I start thinking about what my next speech will be, that question always comes back. Why are you giving this speech? My theory about the person who asked that question is, based on this story also, have you ever seen a little boy pet a little kitten? The boy will run, he will dive on the cat, and he'll try and pet it, and the kitten will growl, and it will turn around, and it will smack him right in the face, and almost pull out some meat as it scratches him. And the boy will be shocked. I'm just petting this cat. And the cat looks at the boy and goes, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> and the boy will run again, and he'll grab the cat, and the cat will growl, and it will smack him again. The cat will say, children are mean. What is wrong with this boy? The boy will say, cats are horrible. They bit you and they scratch your face and they leave you with scars. But the same kitten will go over to the dog, little girl, and the girl will hold it and she'll pet it. And the kitten will be very settled. It will enjoy the petting. So is it the kitten or is it the boy? I think it is a lack of understanding from both. The kitten does not understand that the boy is getting to a spot where the kitten will be settled and he can pet it. But he does not know how to transition from hold the kitten, let it settle, and pet <clears throat> it. For him, it's a very awkward encounter. The kitten, in the same instance, thinks, oh my god, this kid is trying to kill me. What is wrong with this child? Parent, get a hold of your child. What is wrong with you? The kitten also thinks that the boy is being malicious, but the boy is really just trying to pet the kitten. The kitten wants to be petted because anyone else pets it, and it's fine. But when this boy touches it, the kitten is not as happy. So my thought on the person who asked me, why do you give the speeches you give? This person was uncomfortable. They weren't comfortable because, one, they did not know me or understand me the way some of them the other people in the group would. They did not understand where I was coming from. They did not understand my speeches, and my speeches made them very uncomfortable. This happened because I did not lay any groundwork. I did not try and set a stage for them to be able to meet me halfway. I should have done better as a speaker. I should have prepared my audience better. It should have not been about me. But we already established at the beginning of this speech that I am so self-centered, so I cared about me then. <laughs> but I have learned. I have learned to prepare for those speeches. Why do we do the things we do? And why do we judge the people around us the way we do? If you think about it, if you're driving down the highway, and the cat comes flying down and goes past you, that person is a moron. What's wrong with them? They'll get a ticket in the next mile. You'll even pray for them to get a ticket. And if you see some police car right there, you'll try and peep. Is it the person who flew right by me? And if someone is driving in front of you and they're slow, what is wrong with this person? They are driving so slow. So it doesn't matter if you're driving fast or you're driving slow. Next to the person that you're driving, you're either a moron because you're driving way too fast, or you're too slow, get out of the way, we're trying to get somewhere. And that is life. For the speeches that you give, for the actions that you take, for the things that you do, you will always be the moron who's flying down the highway, or the slow person who needs to get out of the way for things to happen. You have to do you. You have to be yourself. You have to stop at a place where you find the center of who you are, why you do the things you do. And if you can be able to answer, why am I doing what I'm doing, then you stand by it and you stand by it strong. Because you will follow your conscience and do the right thing. At least I hope. So go out there, be nice to each other, and do the right thing.